there's a six-sided indentation on the base. Perhaps the mounting for a statue. Let's see. Fits perfectly. I wonder if I... <sighs> How pretty. The vessel's a few centimetres deep and empty. There are some brown stains on the bottom. Ooh, this must be the ominous machine which is reputed to have a ghost living in it. The vessel at its base must be for fuel. The statue has small holes in its nose, and it appears that the mouth could be opened. Hello, you in there? Ghost, give me beans for your draught. <clears throat> oh, mighty ghost in the machine, give me the beans for your delicious, godly draught. Let's look at it this way. If you don't give me the beans, then I won't be able to prepare your stupid draught, and that won't be of any use to anyone. Why the wait? Beans all present and correct. And what was that about the fuel again? Ah oh yes, here. Grind the beans and pour the powder into boiling water. Do you have any idea which artefact could be so powerful that it could make someone into the ruler of the world? No, that's been lost to the depths of the ocean. No, that's been thrown back into the same fire that was used to forge it. No, I haven't got a clue. It must be something that no one bargained for. Something that no one has ever looked for. It'll be in the Gremlins book. If only I had it already. Scarecrow not scaring you? Yes, certainly. And how? Normally you're the first to take flight. Good luck, little one, and don't get up to any mischief. The well rope is fastened to the windlass. It doesn't look particularly strong. Hmm, that was suspiciously easy. The rope is broken and the bucket's probably at the bottom of the well where it's of no use to anyone. An old watering can made out of metal. It's small even by gremlin standards.
The rope has broken. Presumably the years spent soaked in water have rotted it away. That should hold. Let's give it a whirl. It worked. This means that I have a gremlin watering can full of water. A swinging metal frame. You can hang pots or something of that sort onto it and then swing it over the fire. The watering can with the cold well water is hanging on the metal arm. A pile of logs. There is no way that MacGuffin will get through the winter with such a small amount, not even autumn. Three should be enough. Once they get going, they'll burn for a few hours. They'll burn well, they're dry as bone. An upturned flower pot made of clay. There's a stone under it. Hmm, that could be a fire stone. That's coming with me. Presumably the professor wanted to prevent the stone getting wet. I'll give it a go. What? Let's see. The water's boiling. A watering can full of hot water. Very well. Hmm, the water's turning brown. And it smells... Mmm, lovely. That's the fuel for the machine sorted. And woe betide of this whole effort's in vain. Uh, hello? You there, ghost. I have to find the secret cellar. Will you help me? Clever mechanism. So this is the legendary secret cellar. The cellar continues on behind these bars. I can't see anything, but I bet that the book's in there somewhere.
A picture on a stone slab. It depicts a man in a robe with a staff in his hand. A jewel is glinting in the headpiece of the staff. Some sort of light beam shining on it. A small, fat figure. She's holding a mirror above her head. Looks ancient. The sad remains of extinct cultures and of the last camping trip. A small circular opening in the ground. It's decorated with an ancient script, just like the picture on the wall. Hey, that's the staff that was in the picture on the wall. About two metres long, and it has a top made of bronze. It's just the jewel that's missing. Guess even a secret cellar is in the end just a cellar, and all cellars have gardening tools such as these gardening shears. As long as I'm not expected to do the gardening now. There's a stone in the undergrowth. There's something written on it, but I can't see what it is. That could be a little gravestone. I don't believe it. Now I've ended up doing the gardening. It is indeed a gravestone. A little gravestone made of granite that's got Kinski inscribed on it. I bet that the light beam is meant to enter the house through that window. I just can't reach it. The window's open. The last rays of sunlight can enter the house. explains why the mirror was hanging there. It was there to reflect the light. I must find a replacement. A small old-fashioned shield. The inside is highly polished. Perfect. The shield's reflecting the light beam down into the cellar.
the light beam is reflected by the little figure's mirror, but it's simply shining onto the floor. Hmm, there are strange marks on the figure's pedestal. Looks like the figure may have been turned. I've got to try and turn it back to its original position. Strong iron bars without a door or lock. Behind it is a dark room. I somehow have to open the bars. Yoo-hoo! I will say this one more time. I'm not Mortimer. Of course not, if you say so. Mortimer has been kidnapped, and I wanted to rescue him. I guess... That's... that's terrible. You'll have to hide. Me? Why? They want to kidnap you. That's already happened. Mortimer, it's Mortimer. Mortimer has already been kidnapped. But that's impossible. Who is talking to me at night, then? Mortimer is your friend, is he not? Did he, um, uh, excavate you? You could say that. I was lying in the dark for quite some time. Then the lid opened and Mortimer was there. I've been with him ever since. Well, as things look right now, Mortimer's not going to be here to chat for some time. We do not chat. We discuss. We deliberate. We debate. We chat. But we would never go skiing. Huh? Why, do you really want to go skiing? I don't want to go skiing. Hmm, what is skiing? No idea. Did you have an accident in a bandage factory? No, I'm a mummy. Don't mummies have their brains pulled out via their noses during the mummification process? I don't think so. I do. How exactly do the iron bars in the cellar open? Hey, I'm talking to you. You? You can speak? You know what? Forget it. I'll work it out for myself. I'd rather search through every nook and cranny of this house than inflict any more of these conversations upon my elven ears. You? You can speak? I know you've never been down there, but there was a staff in the cellar, and there's a precious stone that belongs on the top of it, a ruby. Do you know where it is? But of course, Mortimer. You asked me to hide it for you. Don't you remember? Uh, I, I must have forgotten about that. Oh, what would you do without me? Could you please just give it to me? I just need it for a second. What? The jewel. And before you ask, I mean the stone that you put somewhere safe for Mo uh, me. And please don't tell me that you've forgotten. How could I forget that? You said it was very important that no one found the stone. Oh, OK. Now please can I have it back? Why would I give a complete and utter stranger Mortimer's stone? But I am Mortimer. Oh. Don't be ridiculous. You're too tall, too thin, too hairy, and you have those... those things there.
I've had enough of this nonsense. Give me the jewel. Never. Threats will get you nowhere. I'm a karate master. I'm a friend of Mortimer. He sent me to fetch something out of the cellar. I have never seen you here before, and I never forget a face. Please, it's urgent. I do not know whether I can trust you. I would only give a really good friend of Mortimer's the jewel. That's me. I saved his life. Well, maybe. Really? Hmm. If you are truly a good friend of Mortimer, then you will be able to give me the answer to the following question. What colour is his underwear? Red. He mostly wears red underwear. That's right! Red silk underwear. But I'm still not quite satisfied, so... What is his cat's name? His cat died some while ago. Her gravestone's outside. Her name was Kinsky. It was a tomcat. The poor thing was always so happy playing with my bandages. Yes, very sad, very sad. But hopefully this proves that I am a good friend of old Mortimer, does it not? You have only answered one of my questions. Two? Uh, you asked me about his underwear. But why would his underwear be of any interest to me? Oh, come on, don't change the subject. Are you going to give me that jewel now? No, not yet. I have one last question. What did Count Grunschfeld or Pieperbock say to his adjutant Henninger shortly before the Battle of Budlerberg? Huh? Wrong. No, I just don't understand what you're talking about. I am a trifle unsure about this, too. It is a bit like a coded question. And do you know the answer? Of course. Mortimer told me. And you haven't forgotten it? I... um... um... no. So, what is the answer? Two hundred and thirty-four, of course. Oh? What? Two hundred and thirty-four. I know all about that. Mortimer told me many times. Two hundred and thirty-four what? The professor is 234 years old. I've answered your question. I asked that? I impossible. Mortimer just turned 63 on the 13th of July. So? 234 what? How can anyone who is a good friend of Mortimer not know that? But how? What? 234. Mortimer never told you that. Well, yes. 234. So it turns out that you aren't such a good friend after all, then. If you don't even know anything about the 234. Oh. Oh, that. You mean that 234. Yes, exactly. With that... thingy. Precisely. I see that you are a good friend of old Mortimer's after all. Of course. Splendid. Now that you've proven that, can you give me the jewel? At last. <laughs> Many thanks. Uh, you're welcome.
Hmm, this must be the secret book. Oh, it's been written by hand and there are several pictures. There are a few words written in orange ink. That doesn't exist, does it? The artefact of divine fate. This is serious. I should get this book to the Archmage as quick as I can. As long as I don't bump into the sorcerer or his troll, I should manage to make Seastone by midday tomorrow. Hm, shouldn't be a problem. Uh-oh. Ah! Ah! Why are you staring like that? Never seen a town guard before? No. You... You're a human, aren't you? Me? Yes, uh... You could say that. Never been anything else. Wow. My name is Bartholomew Anton Shieldhand, Royal Town Guard of Seastone. And who are you? Um... Weathervane. Wilbur Weathervane, from the White Ridge Mountains on a secret mission. Weathervane? Hmm, OK then. Where... where am I? This lovely seaside resort. Residence of the Archmage and home of the Sea Shanty Singers is Seastone. Seastone? Then I made it! Absolutely, I'd say. And here's me thinking that the orcs were firing grunts at our walls again. I have to see the Archmage. It's urgent. <laughs> Then I wish you the best of luck. The guard at the upper gate follows very strict procedures. He won't let you through to the Archmage that easily. Is the Archmage even in his tower at the moment? I'm not allowed to give out any information on that subject. Those are the regulations. Can you tell me anything about the Archmage? Do you know him personally? Of course I know him. The Seastone Town Guard is also responsible for protecting the Archmage. Why does he need protection if he's as powerful as everyone says? Well, he's not uh, exactly the greatest of warriors. No? No. He's uh, more strange. He thinks about stuff, you know. Strange? Why does he do that? Who knows? Who knows? What do you mean by Upper Town? Well, the town's divided into the Upper Town and the Lower Town. The Archmage's Tower is, of course, in the Upper Town. And what's in the Lower Town? Taverns, shops, the common people's dwellings. Well, at least they used to live there. Not anymore. Where are the town's inhabitants? Gone. Lots of them died when the town was besieged, and most of the survivors then went off with Gustav the Handsome to take revenge. That was rather less than successful. And how many people are still living here? Not so many anymore. If the Archmage hadn't had his tower here, the town would have probably been abandoned. Sounds pretty sad. But things will get better. Wait until we win the war and everyone comes back. Well, those that are still alive. But if almost no one lives here, who are you guarding? Oh, I'm not guarding the inhabitants, I'm guarding the town. I'm guarding it like my father did before me and his father before him. But not his father, he was a blacksmith. But his brother-in-law was a town guard and his father was a baker. Interesting. I have to go. I'll get in to see the Archmage one way or another. 
Well, I never. I have to get back to my post too. My break's over. So, Wilbur Weathervane from the White Ridge Mountains. Best of luck on your adventure. No doubt we'll bump into each other again. Thanks, Mr Shieldhand. See you later.